the supreme glory. In his noble footsteps, perfection we see. In his noble footsteps, perfection we see. A model for all in lives, every degree. The supreme Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alika ya Rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As salatu wa salamu alika ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel Welcome to another wonderful episode on the special transmission of Rabi'ul Noor Sharif, Rabi'ul Awwal, which is the blessed month of the blessed birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah azawajal, wherever you are in the world, we are hoping you and your family are safe and sound. And when you're making dua, then don't forget the ummah in your duas as well, inshallah ta'ala. Today we have a glorious topic. We are going to be talking about the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And joining me, we have our respected Mawlana Sayyid Muhammad Madani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Mawlana sir? Alhamdulillah. I'm doing Mashallah. quite well. How are you Mashallah. keeping? Alhamdulillah. Ala kulli hal. To the fadl of Allah wa jal, we are carrying on each day. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Well, we're talking about the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. And uh, there's so many examples to show us the kind of authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So stay tuned for that, inshallah. Before that, Let's remember the beautiful narration, Niyatul Mu'mini Khayrum Min Amalihi. The intention of a believer is better than his action. Let's make some good intentions that, Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, I am watching, I'm listening to the Silsila of Madani channel for your pleasure and happiness, for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm here to seek knowledge of deen. What I learn, I will try to practice and share with others as well. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. There's so many blessings for reciting salawat, durudi pak, salutations upon the cause of creation, the cream of creation, the crown of creation, the owner of Jannah, the knower of the unseen, the intercessor of the ummah, our most merciful prophet, the last prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal, it is mentioned by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself that whoever recites salat upon me 100 times on Friday in the night and day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill 100 of his needs, 70 of the hereafter and 30 of this world. And Allah jalla jalaluhu will appoint an angel who will present the salat to me as you receive presents, gifts. Undoubtedly, my knowledge after my demise will remain the same as it is in my life. That's my Nabi, that's your Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he is away. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has bestowed him with so much of authority, so much of blessings that we really can't understand. Let us make up, our, make up our minds that instead of wasting away this short precious life in unnecessary conversations, useless activities, let us every day place it part of our routine to recite the glorious Qur'an with translation from Ganzul Iman, to recite Salawat, durud Pak, Istighfar, making sincere Tawbah, Dhikrullah, making sure that daily we are punctual with our salahs, we are fulfilling rights of others, we are abstaining from sins, practicing the sunnah, because these things will help us inshallah. Let's listen to a beautiful kalam and we'll continue with our discussion. Don't go anywhere. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Mustafa, 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 Mustaf
गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए मुस्तफा सरकार की आमद गमखार की आमद आका की आमद हुजूर की आमद और नूर की आमद प्यारे की आमद अच्छे की आमद और नूर है जमाना है सुबह शबे सुबिला शबे पर्दा उठा है किसका सुबह शबे सुबिला शबे प्यारे रबी रबी तेरी झलक के सदे लग चमका दिया नसीबा चमका बदिया चनसीबा सुबह शबे विला शबे विला शबे विला मुबारक हो नबी उल अम्बिया तशरीफ ले आई मुबारक हो शे मुश्किल सुशा तशरीफ ले आई मुबारक शाह जजा तशरीफ ले आई मुबारक दाफे कर वो बला तशरीफ ले आए वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए मुस्तफा गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए जिल ने जाते कि बिरिया ने जलवा फरमाया सरासर पे करे नूरे खुदा ने जलवा फरमाया हबी बेखारो समाने जलवा फरमाया वो यानी मालिक दो सरा ने जलवा फरमाया गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए मुस्तफा तेरी चमक दम से मक आलम चमक रहा है मक तेरी चमक दम से मक आलम चमक रहा है मक मेरे भी बख्त चमका सुबह शबे बेला शबे आई नई हुई सिक्का नया चलेगा आलम ने रंग बदला आलम ने रंग बदला सुबह शबे बेला मुबारक हो यतीमों को फकीरों को मुबारक हो मुबारक हो गरीबों को गुलामों को मुबारक हो मुबारक बेबसों को कस्मा पुरुषों को मुबारक हो मुबारक बेकसों को बे को मुबारक हो सरकार की आमद गमखार की आमद आका की आमद हुजूर की आमद और नूर की आमद प्यारे की आमद अच्छे की आमद गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा मुस्तफाए मुस्तफा मुस्तफाए मुस्तफा मुस्तफाए मुस्तफा मुस्तफाए मुस्तफा मेरे आका मेरे सर पर मेरे सरदार आ पहुँचे मेरे मौला मेरे रहबर मेरे सरकार आ पहुँचे मेरे हाथे सुबह गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा वो आए मुस्तफा वो आए मुस्तफा चलाते दुनिया दियाए वो शमरे लाम शमरे जीन ते अरशे बरी आए अली गूंजती है हर तरफ सदाए मरहबा 
سلاطین زمانہ دامن امید پھیلائیں حضور شاہ سر پر آزان عالم التجالائیں خبر دو تاجداروں کو سلامی کے لیے لائیں شہ شاہ ہو سکے تو ہاں مبارک بادی آگا ہے سرکار کی آمد مرحبا غمخار کی آمد مرحبا آقا کی آمد مرحبا حضور کی آمد مرحبا پر نور کی آمد مرحبا پیارے کی آمد مرحبا اچھے کی آمد مرحبا گونجتی ہے ہر طرف صدائے مرحبا گونجتی ہے ہر طرف صدائے مرحبا مصطفیٰ 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 صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم I'm sure that you enjoyed that lovely kalam In fact, on social media Our official page is called Naad Production Visit there And you will see there are so many beautiful options Beautiful kalams Ham Sharif, Naad Sharif, Man Kabat, Munajat Instead of filling our ears With something which is detrimental Which is forbidden And music Rather listen to these kalams and above all listen to kalamullah. Do you know? The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the day of judgment, people after assembling will go to Sayyiduna Nabi Adam ala Nabiina wa alayhi sallatu wasalam and they will humbly ask him, request him to intercede for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will say, I'm not for this. You should go to Nabi Ibrahim as he is the Khalil of Allah The people will then all go to look for Nabi Ibrahim He will say the same thing. I'm not for this. Go to Musa salam. He is the Kalim of Allah. Everybody is going to go to Musa salam. What will Musa salam say? He will say, I'm not for this. Go to Isa salam. He is Ruhullah, he is Kalimatullah. People will then search for Nabi Isa alayhi salam. They will find him, ask him to help them, intercede for them. But he too will say, I'm not for this. You should go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who is saying this here? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrating this. He's saying that, then the people will come to me. And I will say, that I am for this. Subhanallah. I will say that I am for making intercession. I will then seek permission from my Lord. I will then be granted permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will put such hymns into my heart that I do not have in my knowledge right now. I will recite one of those praises, one of those hymns and will fall into sajda to Almighty Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. It will then be said, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raise your head, say and you will be heard, ask and you will be granted, make intercession, it will be accepted. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I will then say, my Lord, my Ummah, my Ummah. It will then be said, go and take every person of your Ummah out of hellfire who has even Iman equal to the grain of Pali. Allah. I will go and I will take them out. Then I will return and praise my Lord Azza wa Jal out of those praises and hymns. Then again I will fall into sajda before my Rabb Azza wa Jal. It will be said, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raise your head, say and you will be heard, ask and you will be granted, make intercession, it will be accepted. I will humbly say again, my Lord, my Ummah, my Ummah. It will be said, go and take every person of your Ummah out 
who has faith even equal to the grain of a mustard seed, I will go, I will take them out. And then I will return and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from those special praises that He grants me. And then will fall into sajda once again. It will be said, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raise your head, say you will be heard, ask you will be granted, make intercession, it will be accepted. And once again I will say, Ya Rabb, Ummati, Ummati. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu will say, go and take out the one out of the fire who has faith even less than the grain of a mustard seed. So I will go and do the same. This is a long narration. I want you to think, who else is going to be given this authority on that very difficult trying day of Qiyamah? When the sun is going to be right there, one and a quarter miles above, people, some of them are going to be drowning in their own perspiration. They will perspire according to their sins. There won't be no water, no shade. There won't be no water except for the fountain of Gawthar. There won't be no shade besides the shade of the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People, what's going to be my condition? I mustn't think that it's going to be other people. Perhaps I'm going to be included in there that I will also go with the other people to Nabi Adam Ali Salam, Ibrahim Ali Salam, Musa Ali Salam, Isa Ali Salam. I'm in that group of people. Who can help me? Who can help me? The one who can help is the one who has authority to help. The one who has been given permission to help. Subhan and that will be none other than my master and your master, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's think about this. That am I loyal to him? I want that help. I'll need that help because nobody else is going to help me. Nobody else will have the authority and permission to help me. And the beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will open the door of intercession. And thereafter, others will help. Hujjaj will help. Those Hufad who are practical upon the commands of the Quran, they will help. Ulama Ikram, the pious people, then they will help after Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam opens the door of intercession. Ji Huzur. No, Mahasab. Speaking of the authority of Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam, one has to understand that this authority has been granted to him by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Absolutely. I think that is very important. Yes, absolutely. A person mustn't get this waswasa and evil whisper of shaitan. That right. How can you say that? Exactly. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is giving the authority. Who are we to question? Yes. 100% and we see in, in the entire life, mm. in the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where there has been so many situations mm -hmm. in which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, in which we see the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the proof, the evidences of the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is even proven by the Holy Quran, mm. wherein it is mentioned, Bismillah rahman rahim وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتُهُ That whatever Masha Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you, then take it. Hmm. And whatever Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbids you from, then refrain from it. Subhanallah. As we see in the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was with Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was resting on the lap of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the time of Asr Salah passed and when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam awoke he found out that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu has missed his Asr Salah and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu told Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this Thereafter, what did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sun to rise back so that Allah Sayyidina Allah. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu can perform his asr salah. Subhanallah, Look subhanallah. At, at this authority mm -hmm. of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mm -hmm. and this is one of those many cases in the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, dear viewers and listeners of Madrin channel, have you heard? The Quran is teaching you and I 
the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it says whatever he gives you you must take it that's an imperative command fi'l amr meaning a, an imperative command that we don't have a choice actually what the rasul gives you you must take it. What he forbids you, you must abstain from that. Now I ask you a question. I need to ask myself as well. That am I loyal to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Am I loyal to the Deen, to Islam, to the Quran? Am I loyal to Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And am I following these commands? That what my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives me, I'm taking what he forbids me, I'm refraining from. Or am I following my own desires, my own opinions, my own thoughts, my own ideas? And keep in mind, whatever thoughts, ideas, opinions that I have, most definitely it is there because it has been influenced by external sources, outside sources. Maybe something I'm reading, something I'm listening to, or the company I'm keeping. Those things fashion our thoughts, our ideas, our opinions. But if I'm grounded in Islamic values, Islamic teachings, then I will think likewise. Mulana Sahib mentioned so beautifully about the incident of the sun going back after it had set. A person who has no authority, can he do something like this? The setting sun, the sun has already set. Asur time is gone, Maghrib time has entered. Only a person who has been given ability, capability, power and authority can do something like this. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is unlike you and I. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to Sahaba Ikram that Ayyukum mithli. Allah. Who amongst you is like me? Because he was doing so many with Saul. Meaning he was fasting continuously without eating anything, without sahur, without sahri, without iftar. And Sahaba Ikram, Ali Muridwan, they were the most loyal and obedient and wanted to follow in the footsteps of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were doing the same and became visible. They became weak, it was difficult to perform salah even. And then they said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see you doing this, so we're also trying to do this. And he said, Are you with me? Who amongst you is like me? <laughs> My Lord feeds me. So he's unlike us because he has been he's appointed as a prophet of Allah, the last prophet of Allah. He is Sayyidul Ma'sumin, the leader, the master of those who are sinless. And you and I are common everyday sinners. And there's no comparison. So be careful of these wasawis. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who grants these authorities to his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah jalla jalaluhu states in the glorious Quran, Surah An-Nisa verse 65. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Fala wa rabbika la yu'minun hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajra baynahum. فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Translation from Kanzul Iman. So, O dear Prophet, by oath of your Lord, they will not be Muslims until they appoint you a judge for the disputes between them. And then whatever you have decided, they should not find opposition to it within their hearts and they must accept it wholeheartedly. The Quran is teaching us, the Quran is conditioning our minds and our hearts that He وسلم, is the supreme judge in this dunya that he amongst the creation of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been appointed by Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. He's appointed as our guide, he's appointed as our teacher, as our leader, as our role model. By who? Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Like this, if you just, just have to read the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his bliss biography, believe me, you will come across so many different narrations and examples showing his his authority, his abilities, his capability in this world 
and in the hereafter as well. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has certain rights over us as believers that we are loyal to him, that we obey him. If we claim to love Allah azza wa jal, we don't have a choice. The Quran says that obey me, follow me. If we love Allah azza then we have to follow Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what he brought, the guidance of Islam, of the Quran, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to follow him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and forgive your sins. This is what the Quran teaches us. Alhamdulillah azza wa this kind of a mindset, our wonderful, fragrant, madani movement Dawud Islam is giving us. At every turn, we always find something to learn. Authentic knowledge from authentic sources, authentic scholars. Whether you are attending the weekly sunnah inspiring ijtima, or you're giving or listening to dars, or you have enrolled in Faizan Online Academy, in one of our courses, or you're attending the specialized classes for grown-ups, or traveling with madani qafilas, wherever it is, the idea is to empower yourself with authentic knowledge. And part of that authentic knowledge is acknowledging the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states in the glorious Qur'an, in Surah Al-Ahzab verse 36, translation from Kanzun Iman, and no Muslim man or woman has any right in the affair when Allah and His noble Prophet have decreed a command regarding it. Sadr al-Afadil, Mufti Sayyid Muhammad Naim al-Din Murad al-Badi rahmatullahi has said that it has become obvious that obedience to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every matter for a Muslim is wajib. It is necessary. And in comparison to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no one has any authority even over himself. I can't do as I please. I can't just say anything. Which happens today. Whatever comes to the mind, especially if a person is in a fit of rage, is angry. I just say anything. I just do anything. There's a good business venture. But have I checked? Does my deen allow this kind of transaction? Does my sharia, the law of Allah Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allow this? Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We're discussing the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've covered some aspects already, some examples were given. And whether it was effecting change regarding Salah, Hajj, and these are part of the pillars of Islam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has been given this authority. And you know in today's day and age or throughout the ages, if you truly want to see the true self of an individual, give him authority and see what he does with it. Does that authority corrupt him or make him just as a just ruler? If you look throughout history, if you look at the lives of those who had authority among Sahaba Ikram alayhim ridwan and the pious people, subhanallah, the people loved them. In fact, they wanted to run away from authority. But people said, no, you are the perfect person for this position. You are the most competent. Look at Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz radiallahu an, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, the Khulafa Rashidin, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Mawla Ali radiallahu an majma'een. Each of them, each of the pious people, because they learned from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how to display authority based on justice and harmony in society. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned by name certain people are going to Jannah. Hmm. Who can do this? Yeah. Somebody comes and tells you that you're going to paradise fixed. One who has authority and that was given to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would say, 
ابو بکر فی الجنہ عمر فی الجنہ عثمان فی الجنہ علی فی الجنہ He mentioned the Ashura Mubashara, those ten blessed individuals by name who were told that you are going to Jannah. And what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says is the absolute truth. There's no doubt in that. Who has told us that Sayyidah Lady Fatima to Zahra radiallahu anha is the leader of the woman of Jannah? Meaning she's going to be in Jannah. Who has told us that Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhuma are the leaders of the youth of Jannah? And similarly, every Sahabi, without any shadow of doubt, is a guaranteed Jannati. One day, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells his Sahabi, Sayyiduna Rabi'a bin Ka'b Aslami radiallahu an, that sal ya Rabi'a, ask whatever you want. It will be given to you. And Sahabi Rasul, he knew the authority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does he ask for? He says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I wish to be your neighbor in Jannah. Subhanallah. He's not thinking small. He's not thinking about something temporary benefit of the dunya, of the world. He's thinking ahead. That's what you call foresight and, and, and insight. Uh, he didn't just say that I want Jannah. Rather, he said that I Allah want Allah your Allah. company in Jannah. Ya if you got the owner of Jannah, Subhan you got Jannah. Allah. Subhanallah. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Awaghayru dhalik, anything else you want. You're going to Jannah, you got my neighborhood in Jannah. What else do you want? He said, that's it, Ya Rasulullah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised him, help me with sujood. Meaning, salah and nawafil salahs as well. Read in abundance, perform in abundance. Even other aspects of the deen, as I mentioned, like hajj, like salah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us and displayed this authority given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ji Mahasab. You know Mahasab, the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared hajj to be fard, and then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this announcement of Hajj being fard to, to the people. Mm, right. And a Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Hajj fard upon us every year? And the Sahabi, he asked this three times. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if I have to say yes, if I had said yes, then Hajj will become fard every year for a person. Allah, Look at this authority of Rasulullah Wasallam. On, on another occasion... Masab, just before you continue, now we see the authority of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We also see his concern. Yes, absolutely. His care, his concern for the Ummah. Not to cause difficulty Not for to the cause ummah. difficulty, to create ease, to facilitate right. ease for us. Because the reality is... Many Muslims around the world, perhaps majority, are finding it diffi difficult to fulfill the one Hajj. Right. One that Fard Hajj, Hajj which is Fard that once in your lifetime, to fulfill that one Fard Hajj mm -hmm. is difficult for most of us. Because we, by the time we try to save up, maybe it will take you your whole life to save up. And then by that time, maybe your health won't permit it. There's other policies or difficulties uh, on the way as well. So imagine if it was every year we have to do it. What will we do then? But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thought about you and I. And to facilitate that ease, he, as he said it, that you know what, if I said yes, it will become found every year. But subhanallah azza wa jal, out of his mercy, out of his concern, out of his great care for the ummah, he made it once. Subhanallah azza wa jal. Even on one occasion, Mahasab, there was a person who <clears throat> came in the court of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, he wanted to become a Muslim but on one condition. Yes. And that condition was that he be allowed to read only two salahs. Allah. And as we know, five times daily salah is compulsory. something which is compulsory upon us. Right. It is fard upon us to deny its obligations. Is this belief is mm. kufr. Mm, mm, so mm. here this person is saying that I would be, I will become a Muslim. But on condition, 
I want to only perform two salahs. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grants this person permission for two salahs. Subhanallah. Now Subhanallah. we have to remember that this, this is the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this, uh, this permission, it is only granted to that specific person. Not to the entire ummah. For the rest of us, it is five salahs. So this is, you know, um, demonstrating the great authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I think that the part in the end, is especially what you mentioned, is very important. Gee. Because somebody must not just quote this first part right. and then not look at what the scholars mention, what they elaborate and explain about the blessed hadith and say, okay, you know, so I'm, uh, and decide that, you know what, I'm just going to read one salah or two salahs because that allowance is there. So this was specifically for that Sahabi. With regards to uh, the changes in the time of Salah, then Subhanallah Azza wa Jalla, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has even given, uh, it shown that you know how much he really cares about the Ummah and facilitated ease with regards to the timing of Isha as well. Absolutely, Ma'am. So in, in one hadith actually, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions, you know, the, the summary of this hadith is that if I had not considered it difficult upon my Ummah, then I would have ordered them to delay Isha until one third of the night or until midnight. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This Masab, as you were saying, you know, it shows the, on, on one hand, the authority of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and on the other hand, it shows Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's concern for us, his Ummah. Imagine if we had to delay Yavisha Salah right up until midnight. How difficult would that have been? But here Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it easy for us and did not order that. So this is the, the authority of Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam. Well dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, we don't have to wait to, for midnight to need Isha. Because there's ease for us. In all the Salahs, it is actually we who make things difficult. Because you see, if I don't live my life around these five daily salahs, then I'm putting myself in problem. A person may wake up late and not perform the Fajr salah. I overslept. Or a person may be say that I'm busy at work. I can't get my Dhuhr, Asr. I'm so hungry, I need to have supper, so there's no Maghrib. Now I need to sleep, so there's no Isha. Who's to blame? You and I are to blame. But if I was brought up in that environment where constantly I'm reminded about the five daily salahs, and this is also going to help us in time management because as I would take a business appointment so seriously, I need to take this even more seriously. These five daily appointments that I have, it's not something that I have a choice in. It is compulsory. And if a person neglects it and does not perform it out of laziness, they are major sinners. The one who uh, leaves one salah intentionally, that person's name is written on the door of hell through which he will enter. The first action that a person will be questioned about on the day of judgment is about salah. So what's the condition of our salahs when the deen has made it so uh, simple for us, so easy for us? And it takes just a few minutes. Each salah takes a few minutes. I can work eight hours a day at my job. I can take out time, one hour, two hours, three hours for chatting on social media. I can take out time for recreational activities to go to the gym. But my salahs, I don't have time for that. We have time. If we don't, we have to make time. There's no choice in it. Because what excuse I'm going to have on the Day of Judgment? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the mercy to all the universes. We want his help. As we mentioned the narration in the very beginning, that when we go to him, what face are we going to show him? When we go to ask for help, what face am I going to show him? Today, if somebody asks us to please do something, and I decline, I refuse, and asks me again and again, and I refuse, and now I need the person's help, what face am I going to go show, show to them? that I need your assistance, I need your help. Because I know I will be guilty. On the Day of Judgment, what's going to happen to us? What face will we show to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we disobeyed him, we disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal, we never read our salahs, we did the wrong things, 
We followed in the footsteps of shaitan. Quran tells us, don't follow in the footsteps of shaitan. So with our tongues, we said we love Allah and His Rasul, Azza wa Jalla wa Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam. But with our actions, we did the complete opposite by neglecting our salahs, by not following the sunnah, by following our desires, by following what opinion society has. So let us think before we say anything, before we do anything, let us become punctual with our salahs. And Alhamdulillah, in this beautiful, fragrant environment of Dawud Islami, there's always these reminders. Reminders are beneficial for the believers. We need these reminders because we get caught up in the dunya. We get caught up with family. We get caught up in different aspects of life. So we need constant reminders. And for those who are in Dawud Islami, part of Dawud Islami, part of the activities of Dawud Islami, the reminders are always there. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. We are discussing the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. See, we need to understand. Once again, we are emphasizing on this. This authority is given to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by none other than Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So who are we to question? Or anybody to question? Subhanallah. Let's listen to a lovely short video clip, a little filler. And we'll continue with the discussion. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is unique in every aspect. Whatever aspect you study of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find it matchless, unparalleled. Now, if we look at the blessed birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even that is matchless, unparalleled. It's mentioned in Sirat Mustafa that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered this world in a state of prostration. That's unique. The Prophet alayhi wa sallam entered this world and performed sajda. He was already circumcised and his umbilical cord was already severed, cut. A delightful fragrance emanated from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time of dawn before Fajr on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, awwal corresponding to 20th April 571 AD. So when you look at the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, and we see how different it was to any other birth, how it was unique, matchless, unparalleled, special, then if that's the case with his blessed birth, then imagine his noble life, entire noble life. There is no one like our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah ta'ala grant us ma'rifah, recognition of the maqam of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah Azza wa Jal, always something to learn at every turn. This is the beautiful madani environment of Dawati Islami. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given many special authorities by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And did you know that one of them was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him the owner of Jannah and the entire world? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can give Jannah to whoever he wants. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can gift any worldly land to whomsoever he wills. The Imam of the Ahlul Sunnah, Allah Hazrat, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullah ta'ala Ali, has mentioned Allah Almighty has made Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the owner of the entire land of this world and of Jannah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has the authority to give any part of Jannah to whomever he wants. Now if this is his authority with regards to the properties of Jannah, then what can we say about his authority over the land of earth? Any land of earth, subhanAllah Azza wa Jal. Elsewhere, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali says that with the bestowal of Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam is the owner of Jannah, the one who grants Jannah and he can give it to whomever he wants. Sadr al-Shari'ah, Badr al-Tariqa, Mufti Amjad Ali A'adami Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, he mentions with regards to the Islamic beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for him the entire earth is his property. 
and the entire of Jannah is his estate. Hakim al-Ummah, Mufti Ahmad Yarkhan Naimi rahmatullahi ta'ala says that the illuminated Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the owner of Jannah and with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can give it to whomever he wants. Masab, this is with regards, these are narrations with regards to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam having ownership over Jannah Right. Through the bestowal of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what can we think, what can we say about having ownership and authority over earth itself, subhanAllah wa jalla. Please share some other examples with us regarding his blessed authority. InshaAllah. You know, in, in the narrations as well, we come across a way in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that I have the keys to the treasures of this earth. Allahu Akbar. Allah Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And as I've mentioned earlier, Masab, that you know, there are, there are so many uh, examples and situations in which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam demonstrated his authority. Right. And one such example is one day Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his right hand, he was holding silk. And in his uh, left hand, he was holding gold. Mm -hmm. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that both of these things, they are haram for the men of my ummah. Mm -hmm. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared it as haram, which, mean, which means no man at all can ever wear silk, can ever wear gold. We see Sayyidina Zubair bin Awam radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Both of them had a dry itch on their body. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them the permission to wear silk clothes. Allahu Akbar. Masam, if you, before you continue, we have a lot of Muslim men out there. Right. That they will put different types of jewelries on. Mm. Some of them have earrings. And we see this ear. is so widespread now. We're seeing it widespread because definitely somebody has influenced them. Or because of keeping the wrong company, mm. they end up you know, piercing the ears, putting earrings, uh, putting nose rings. Men we're talking about. Putting these elaborate bracelets, necklaces, chains, and you know, a whole lot of things. Sometimes uh, both hands, fingers are covered with rings. So, I mean, I mean, we ask the question where did you learn this? From who did you learn this from? From Islam? From the Quran? From Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It reminds me of that incident where a Sahabi had a gold ring. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam removed it and threw it away. And then somebody later on told that Sahabi, why don't you go and take that ring? Use it for some other purpose. But that Sahabi said, what my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam threw away, I will never touch it again. Allah. So I mean, the Sahaba Ikram, they were the most loyal. They understood the reality of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever he says goes. So I need to ask myself, in my life, what goes? My say goes or the say and order of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And mashallah, so from, from, from what you've mentioned, the narration that you've mentioned, just shows how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can make halal for whoever he wants mm -hmm. and can make haram for whoever Allah. he wants. But because Allah. in another narration, it is mentioned that a, a Zahabi, he used to wear a gold ring. Mm. And uh, people, when they would see it, they would object to it. And uh, this Sahabi, he mentions that we were in the court of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was distributing the spoils of war. At the end, only this gold ring was left. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, raised his blessed head and looked at the attendees and then lowered his gaze. Mm. For the second time, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his gaze and then lowered his gaze. Mm. For the third time, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gazed at the Sahabi. He looked at the Sahabi and the Sahabi went closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and sat down. So, holding the ring, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
held the wrist of the Sahabi and said that wear whatever Allah and His Rasul make you wear. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look, look Subhanallah. at this uh, aspect of it. Where this Sahabi had gotten permission from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to wear the gold ring. So these are exceptions actually. Exceptions, yes. Right. Of course, one must not be mistaken and think that because by seeing this narrative, that I can now wear a gold ring. No, that's exclusive. But sometimes people do this. They'll just quote the first part mm. of the narration or the hadith right. and maybe intentionally they will leave out the rest of it. And, and that's a problem that we see now because problem. people, you know, some out there would just want to take what fits them, mm. what suits them. Cherry picking they call yes, it. Yes, Pick yes, and yes, choose, yes. right. And what they don't seem uh, good to them, then they will leave those parts out. But we you know one has to read the full hadith and the full explanation of the hadith like in this narration this is exclusive only to that particular sahabi not to everyone else yes absolutely well dear viewers and listeners of madani channel we are listening to all these examples and if this does not make us understand the kind of authority that he has sallallahu alaihi wa sallam what else will a blessed sahabi radiyallahu an presented himself before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam whilst i was fasting in ramadan intentionally i was intimate with my wife in the condition and state of fasting i am ruined what must i do Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the solver of all problems, he, he asked the Sahabi that, can you free a slave? He said, I cannot, unfortunately. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, can you fast for two months consecutively, meaning 60 days fasting, one after the other? The man replied, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm unable to do that. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, can you feed 60 poor people, miskin? Again, he said, unfortunately, I can't. Meanwhile, somebody came through and they gave a gift of kajur, of dates, to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took those dates and gave all of it to that sahabi. And then said, Give this in charity, your kafara, your compensation will be paid. He radiallahu anhi said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am the poorest person in Medina Tayyibah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled to the extent that his blessed teeth appeared. And he said, go, feed it to your family. Now who else can do this? You and I can't do this here. Scholars today can't do such a thing. It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has deputed him, has given him these abilities, has given him these authorities, that he is displaying it. And who can object? Show me one Sahabi who objected to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making exceptions in the Sharia. Because he is the vice gerund of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the, the one that the revelation came to, the inspiration came to, that whatever he did, whatever he said, that it was through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah azza wa jal. Well, it's time for that wonderful, inspiring and beautiful segment. As you know, our respected Mulana Tabari Saab is going to be asking some of our students Questions based on today's topic of discussion. So let's see what answers they give, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, and we'll be right back. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd, fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله. Our program called the Supreme Role Model 
is being watched. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And this is the segment in which we have our quiz program once again at our Bluff Center, Jamiatul Madina in Durban, South Africa, with our students of the Hibs Academy as well as the Jamia Alim class department. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And today's program, if you are watching, dear viewers, with regards to the authority of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, in this quiz program, questions related to the program that you are currently watching will be asked to the questions and answers will be given by the students of Da'wat Islami. Inshallah, Zawajallah, sit back, relax and enjoy this program for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and share this with others as well, dear viewers. Alhamdulillah, let's ask both sides of the team, team A and B, if they are ready. Let's see, inshallah, Zawajalla, how their performance will be in this segment, inshallah, Azzawajal. So, since our teams are ready, the discussion on Madari channel is the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The very first question is, mention a verse of the Holy Quran Park where Allah Azza wa Jalla shows the authority of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the one who gives the answer to this question, they will get 10 points. Your time starts now. Team B has raised their hands, mashallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in verse number 7 in Surah Hashan. Verse number seven, Surah Al Hashr. Subhanallah. And the answer is correct. Allahu Akbar. Yes, dear viewers of Bandani channel in Surah Al Hashr. Verse number seven, Allah Azza wa Jalla states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ and accept whatever the noble messenger gives you and refrain from whatever he forbids you. Say subhanallah. Masha Allah. Yes, dear viewers of Madhidi Channel, Team B has got 10 points. Let's move to the next question. Which other verse of the Holy Quran Kareem teaches us the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The time starts now. We notice Team A has raised their hands, Masha Allah, before the question was completed. Let's see if they know the answer. Which other verse of the Holy Quran teaches us about the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Perhaps give us the surah name or the ayat number. The other verse that teaches us about the authority of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, verse 69 in Surah Al-Nisa. Verse number 69. Team B, is this answer correct? No, 65. Team A says 65. Is this your final answer? And the answer is correct, subhanAllah. It is Surah Nisa, verse number 65. And the translation from Kanzul Iman is, So, O oh dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by oath of your Lord, they will not be Muslims until they appoint you as a judge for their disputes between them. And then whatever you have decided, they should not find opposition to it within their hearts and they must accept it wholeheartedly. Yes, dear viewers, and now this gives our team A and B 10 points each. The next question is, are we as Muslims allowed to have any other right over Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have decreed? Your time starts now. Team A has raised first. MashaAllah, let's see if they have the answer to this question. Is the answer yes or no? No, no Muslim man or woman has any right over Allah or His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. SubhanAllah. Let's move further. This gives our team A 20 points and team B 10 points, mashaAllah. The fourth question is, Sadr al-Afadil Mufti Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Murada Badi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said regarding obedience to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what did he say with regards to the obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I'm referring to this personality, Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Murada Badi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, the famous scholar that we often quote on Madani channel. The time starts now. MashaAllah, Team B, yes. Um, Mufti Sadr has mentioned that the obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the matter of Muslims is wajib and that no one can come close to the character and the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if he wants to. In the character and personality. And what about the discussion that we are having right now? Which is the discussion and the main topic? In the obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not even he can come close to him. That the Muslim land. Our discussion is with regards to the authority of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So no one can come close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, the answer is half correct. You have to repeat the answer again. The answer is half correct. The obedience of Rasulullah in the matter of Muslim lives is wajib. And that Rasulullah in comparison to him uh, with authority is not more than Musaf. Allahu Akbar. Our jawab bilkul turus diya hai subhanallah. And sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Team B, Mubarak, you have earned yourself 30 points. Team A, Mubarak, mashallah, you are sitting with 20 points. The next question is, Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi rahmatullahi ta'ala li had said that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the deputy of the absolute authority of Allah azza wa jal. Complete the same. Which Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi has said, mashallah, we noticed that team A has raised their hands already. Alhamdulillah. Can you complete the saying of Mufti Amjad Ali Azmi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi? Your time starts now. And the whole word has been given in the authority of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam want to give, then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can give. Subhanallah. So you have said the whole world has been given under the authority of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to give to whoever, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can give to whomsoever he wants to. And your answer is correct. Subhanallah, dear viewers of Madani channel, team A and team B, mashallah, sitting with a draw right now, mashallah, with 30 points each. The next question is, what does the famous Hanafi fiqh book, Bahari Shariat, say about the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Your time starts now. Mashallah, team B, raise their hands. Labbaik. Uh, it is stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given authority to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in his possession. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever he wants to make halal, he can make it halal. Whatever he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to make it halal for someone, then he can make it halal. And whatever he wants to make farad, then he can do so. And he may declare exempted to whomsoever he wants to. The answer is correct, subhanallah. This gives team B 40 points, team A sitting with 30 points. Masha Allah, Mubarak. This is going on very well, dear viewers. We have completed six questions and now we move on to the seventh question. 40 points and 10 points on the right. The next question is, when Allah Azza wa Jalla made Hajj Farub compulsory for his bondman and the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the announcement of Hajj being Farud in the sermon stated, O people, Allah Azza wa Jalla has made Hajj Farud for you, therefore perform Hajj. So a blessed companion but humbly asked, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is Farud to perform Hajj every year? He repeated the same question thrice, but every time the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent. The question is, what did the beloved Rasul then say? For this question, when the questioner had asked, will the person be rewarded with the thawab of hajj every year if he goes for hajj? So, what was the answer of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Team A has their, their hands up. Subhanallah. Ji brother. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied by saying, Lo kultu naan la wajibat. If I had said yes, then it would have become fard every year. And the answer is correct. Subhanallah. This is the authority of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That despite the companion who asked this question on several occasions, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent and he says, Had I said yes, it would have become fard every year. That shows us the clear authority which Allah has given into the blessed hands of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Hadib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once again, they are sitting with a draw between both the teams of 40 points each. The eighth question is, give an example of the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Time starts now. One example. MashaAllah, team B is ready with the example. Ji brother. In the Hadith Sharif, Rasulullah said that if I had not taken great care in my ummah, then I would have made miswak fard, like, our, like how I have made wudu fard upon them. Subhanallah, the answer is correct, dear viewers. Let's go on to the next question. What did the beloved Rasul say regarding delaying Isha Salah as recorded in Tirmizi Sharif? The time starts now. Team B, Masha Allah, once again, very quickly, their hands came up. Let's see, what is the answer to this question, brother? Rasulullah he states that if I had not taken care with my ummah, 
then I would have made I would have made them delay the Isha Salah till one third of the night or even till midnight. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said that if I had not taken care of the difficulties of my Ummah, I would have ordered to delay Isha Salah to one third of the night or to midnight. Do you think the answer is correct? They have a doubt. <laughs> But let me tell you, dear viewers, the answer is correct, subhanallah. Which narration in Abu Dawood Sharif mentions the delaying of Isha Salah? Allahu Akbar. Team A is ready. Labbaik. In hadith number 422 of Abu Dawood, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if it were not for the weakness of the old or the illness of the patients, I would have delayed Isha Salah till midnight. And the answer is correct, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, 50 points for team A and 60 points for team B. The next question, and we have the last two final questions, mention the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the five daily salahs. Your time starts now. Team A, mashaAllah, looks like they want to make it a draw. Let's see if we get this correct, brother. G. Displaying the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said that he would embrace Islam, but he would only perform two of the five salah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted and exempted him from three salahs. This was the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is only specific to that man. You're not allowed to leave salah, that is fart, unless with a shari'i reason. And the answer is correct, subhanAllah. Dear viewers, have you not seen the authority of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa who could have exempted a person from salah which is for the dear viewers? But this authority and ijazah has been given to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given full authority to make any changes he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would love to make, subhanAllah. And now this gives our team A and team B both equally 60 points, subhanAllah. 60 points each. And now we move on to the last question. Remember, hands are um, the first point from where we will ask the question. Whoever's hands come up first is the first team to be asked the question. Does the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have authority over the sun? Explain. Allah Akbar. And team age has raised their hands. Masha Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Let's see what answer team A gives us. G. There is an incident which shows that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa does have authority over the sun. In a place near Khaybar, after performing Asr Salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went to lie down on the laps of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. Sitting there, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was receiving re revelation and closed his eyes. And soon after, the sun began to set. Upon awakening, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa found out that Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala had missed his salah. Immediately, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicated to Allah, saying, Oh Allah, Zawajal, Ali has obeyed you and obeyed me. Cause the sun to rise back so that he may perform his Asr Salah. And just like that, the sun rose back, shining over the land again. And the answer is correct, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, dear viewers. Alhamdulillah, team A have answered all the questions correctly. And we have learned in today's episode, what authority, which is amazing and Beyond any comprehension, dear viewers, Allah Azza wa Jalla has granted this supreme power and authority to his most beloved Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa as the poet says so beautifully, right at the end, we close with this beautiful couplet, subhanAllah, he says, Jo ali ki asr qaza huwi, to wabat par hi ada huwi. Chupe aftab ko mord de Unhe ikhtiyar diya gaya Unhe ikhtiyar diya gaya Woh jo chahe chand ko tord de Alhamdulillah, we say mubarak to both the teams for their initiative and um, their enthusiasm to study, to learn to watch these programs, even to leave their homes and uh, stay in the boarding and lodging facility provided by Dawood Islami to become Hufaz and Ulama of this deen, dear viewers. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Send your children as well and make them Ulamas of this beautiful deen, dear viewers. Until the next episode and next segment, we say keep reciting the Rood and Salawat upon Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما شاء الله عز وجل I'm sure you enjoyed that as well and you see this is also what Dawud Islami is about to train the next generation it's necessary for us because they are the future leaders they are tomorrow's leaders your children which direction are they taking today can determine which direction they will take tomorrow. We want them to be pious Muslims, practicing Muslims, so they get benefit in this world, in the grave, in the hereafter. But am I playing my part? Am I fulfilling my duties of not just providing shelter and food and clothing, but essential Islamic knowledge? This is also very important. Since we're talking about the authority of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran mentions in Surah An-Nisa verse 64, translation from Ganj al-Iman. And if when they have wronged their own souls, come humbly to you and seek forgiveness from Allah and the noble Rasul intercedes for them, they will certainly find Allah as the most accepting of repentance, the most merciful. Subhanallah. Well, today, we can, from wherever we are, we can still beseech and ask Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by using his wasila, the wasul, his medium, as this is what the Quran tells us, وَبَتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَ That seek the wasila, seek the means of approach to him, to Allah Azza wa Jal. Jima sahab, any concluding remarks? Alhamdulillah, Jima sahab. No, we've been discussing about the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he would use his authority and subhanallah this is you know also something for us to also learn from that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had authority in many matters as well as worldly matters and when it came to judging etc Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best so what is imperative for us to learn is that one day or for those who are in the position of authority either at home being a father being a husband or at work being a manager being a boss a ceo etc it's important how one uses the authority in which way they are using the authority are they using the authority to oppress those under them or are they using the authority following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the footsteps of our pious predecessors. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, he had power, he had authority. But not once did we ever read in the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he violated the rights of anyone, where he oppressed anyone, where he hurt or disrespected anyone. You know, we didn't see this. So this is what we need to take also. We need to be loving even to those below us. We need to show affection even to those below us. We need to respect even those below us. And by doing this, we would be following in the footsteps of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our pious predecessors as well. Because being on that level of authority, this... Um, feeling of having pride and ego, arrogance, etc. All of that should not be involved in it. This, these qualities, one should not even have them in the first place. So these are some of the lessons that we gain in having a father. MashaAllah, some beautiful Madani pearls you have shared for today's discussion, MashaAllah Jal. Alhamdulillah Azawajal, this has brought us to the end of this program of the Silsila. Very important that uh, authority or when somebody is given authority, at the same time, it is a time of testing for him. It's a test. What is he going to do with this? Is he going to abuse his power and oppress people? And thereby people will rebel against him and revolt. Or will he use the model, the standard that was set by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was of concern of care of sincerity for the public for those around him so rather 
We learn about the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow in his footsteps. And if you are in a position of authority, then use it wisely because there is accountability for this. Until next time, keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Supreme Rural Order In his noble footsteps Perfection we see In his noble footsteps Perfection we see A model for all in lives Every degree The Supreme